Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my guide to Zoral Ja Extreme, or Everkeep Extreme. This encounter can be unlocked from the Wandering Minstrel in Tuliola after finishing the main scenario quest, literally a few steps from where you finish it. It drops music, amount, and item level 710 accessories. You will also receive one totem per clear and can exchange five totems for an accessory of choice. In a future patch, you'll also be able to exchange 99 of these totems for the mount. This guide is broken up into various parts, so to quickly skip around, please use the timestamps in the description. Before Zoral Jaw is pulled, you'll want to set up light parties and pair groups. One tank, one healer, and two DPS per light party, and one support and one DPS per pairing. These will come into play at later points in the fight, though the light parties may not as much. You'll understand when we get there. Now at the time of making this video, the wall here is not instantly lethal, instead doing a high amount of damage over time to anyone standing in it. This leads to a specific mechanic being technically cheesable. I'll mention it when the time is right, but I'm also going to include a normal strat for said cheesable one, just in case they do patch it. Upon pulling Zoral Jaw, he will open with a raid wide called Actualize. He uses this frequently, so be sure to mitigate it anytime you see it. Immediately after, he will cast Multi-Directional Divide, splitting the arena into four quadrants. The lines on the ground here are not dangerous in any way, and you can walk right over them. They simply represent a line AoE that will occur later. The small lines branching off the main lines will also fire AoEs, so you'll want to dodge the next attack while not being in line with any of the, well, lines. Zoral Jaw will then cast either backward half or forward half, jumping in that direction and swinging his glowing blade, making only a small section of the arena safe. He actually does two swings, one towards the middle of the room and the other on one of his sides, so if you get it extra wrong, you're dead. If he is casting backward half, you'll want to go behind him and get on the side of the quadrant away from the glowing sword, while dodging the line AoEs. If he's casting forward half, he'll actually flip 180 degrees when he jumps forward, meaning that the side his glowing blade is on is actually the safe side. So go in front of him and then towards the side of the glowing blade while dodging the line AoEs. He then does multi-directional divide again. This time I recommend having the entire party stack up. We went to his back by default. Once the arena is split, he will use Regicidal Rage, placing two Tank Buster Tethers on the party. Have the tanks grab these and go to quadrants away from everyone else and each other. We did the Light Party 1 tank going west and the Light Party 2 tank going east for consistency. Pop mitt for the tanks, everybody make sure they dodge the line AoEs and all will be well. After this, Zoral Jaw will enter his first Dawn of an Age, dealing massive raid-wide damage and shrinking the arena substantially. You can now fall off as well, so be careful. There are also four platforms similar to the ones you're standing on at each intercard. Pay attention to these during the mechanics coming up, as they will give you visual tells for dodging everything. Zoral Jaw will do a few autos before casting Voluk, which places several sword patterns on all of the outer platforms. When he casts Sync, he will select two adjacent platforms and light them up, indicating the pattern of AoEs that will slide into the arena that you're standing on. The goal is to look at where the swords are on the synced platforms and avoid that same spot on your own platform. Like I said, they just slide into place, so take care recognizing where they are. Honestly though, if your ping isn't that bad, you can actually react to the swords at the last second. I stand directly between four of the squares and dodge as soon as the ground AoEs light up. It's worked for me a bunch, but others should get used to recognizing safe spots here, or just mark a knowledgeable player to be your Dorito. Zoral Jaw will also perform a half full at the same time that Sync resolves, cleaving half of the arena. So go to the safe half, dodge the synced AoE swords, and you're good. Next is Greater Gateway. This summons tethers that weave and connect the outer platforms to the main one. Two of the platforms are connected with standard purple tethers, while the other two have wind and fire tethers. After this is Blade Warp, which summons one sword on one of the two fire wind platforms and two swords on one of the standard platforms, and they'll be right next to each other so they're easy to spot. When the sword warps through the tether, it will come out on the end attached to the main arena, gaining new properties along the way. Make sure you're paying attention to the entry point of the sword and the end point, because it will change, usually moving over one or two columns. The two sword platforms simply fire the line AoEs where they exit from the tether, while the wind and fire ones change its properties altogether. 
A fire tether sword will cause the line AOE to instead take up three rows, leaving the farthest side of the room from that tether safe. The wind sword will be one line AOE, but it will push back players in adjacent squares by one row, making the inside spot standing right next to it the safe location. You can, however, knock back resist, and that means you could stand on the narrow side technically. Simply put, you need to solve for both sets of swords to find the safe spots. There are only two safe spots for the fire tether pattern, while wind has six if you include the narrow end and knockback resist. If you're confident that you won't screw up the knockback resist, it's actually a pretty good idea to take the narrow end of the arena, as it makes the movement for the next attack much simpler. At least if a few people do it, not if everyone does it. Right after all of the sword AoEs resolve, every player will get an pyramid marker over their head. This will cause the square the player is standing on to pulse with a small AoE. Every player just needs to be in a different ground square. You could assign specific ones, like group one far, group two near, like assign a very specific one, but honestly, we just YOLO'd it and it was fine. Keep in mind that right after this, he will start casting Actualize, so top up and mitt very quickly, and this phase will come to an end. After this is Projection of Triumph. This summons 16 swords on the ground, which, on their own, don't do anything. However, two beams will gradually pass over the arena and trigger effects as they move over the swords. One side will have a small point-blank AoE on the beam, so every time it passes over a sword, it does a little AoE. The other will be a donut that will pulse around the sword's location. You'll just be dodging these as you perform other mechanics. I like to start on the side with the point blank AoEs and stand between the second row of swords and then move into the donut AoE as it passes through from the other side, as you see here. You can also stand on the second row swords on the donut side and then move out when the point blank AoE passes through. It's probably a good idea if your tank does one and the party does the rest. It helps with positionals at the very least. So we had our tank you can see doing here. They're doing it on the other side. I'm doing it my way and all is good. After the small movement, Zoral Jaw will face a direction and do a forward or backward half. Simply put, you need to dodge both the AoEs from the beams and Zoral Jaw's swing, which just takes a bit of practice. It could be anything. You could be dodging it on the side with the point blanks and need to be away from the swords. You could be dodging it onto a side that has the donut. You need to be standing in it. No matter what you do, you just have to be ready for any possibility. The bigger problem has been remembering to keep avoiding these AoEs as they pass through the swords once you've dealt with forward or backward slash. You might have to move into a donut. You might have to move out of a point blank. You just gotta be paying attention. As long as you do that, you'll be fine, but it might take a bit of practice. Fortunately, if you're only hit by one AoE, you'll likely just walk away with a Vuln and a much lower health bar, but there's an actualize right after this, so make sure those players are topped off and you have mid. After the swords disappear, Zoral Jaw will cast Projection of Turmoil. This places a debuff on every player that lasts for about 50 seconds. He also summons another beam that crosses over the arena, triggering a stack explosion on any player that it passes through. This explosion also grants a Magic Vuln up debuff for 2 seconds to everyone hit, meaning you'll need a small delay between each hit. Now I'm going to show you how we did it, which was probably the intended way, and then show you how you can and probably will be doing it in the Party Finder. The only reason I'm even showing you option number one is just in case it gets patched, which to be honest, I don't think it will. Option number one is to split up into two light parties and have each player in the stack trigger the explosion one at a time. We did healer, then tank, then melee, then ranged, or DPS one, then DPS two. But the order is arbitrary here. Keep in mind, once your debuff is off, you can freely pass through the line without any punishment. Just make sure to have a small delay between each hit, stay stacked up, heal between, and you'll be good. The way you'll likely do it is to do literally none of that. Since the beam doesn't actually reach the corners of the map as it's crossing through, the wall isn't lethal to the touch either. You can actually walk into the wall as the beam approaches the far end, heal through the dot, and wait out the timer before stepping back into the arena. This completely negates the entire mechanic and lets you save mitt and major resources for other attacks. Like I said, I don't think it's gonna get patched, but just in case, please refer to option one. Towards the end of Turmoil, a tank buster will go on the current aggro target. This attack hits three times back to back and hits incredibly hard. You either need to tank swap between each hit or invuln all three hits. I recommend using a tank invuln here and the other tank invuln on the same mechanic a bit later in the fight. 
Once the Tank Buster is done, Zoral Jaw will do Dawn of an Age number two. This time, he will summon a single platform adjacent to the main one. You'll want to break into your support DPS pairings and line up along the third row of squares on the main platform. We had Group 1 Healer Pair, then the Group 1 Tank Pair, then the Group 2 Tank Pair, and the Group 2 Healer Pair from left to right looking at the new platform. Again, this order is arbitrary, but it worked for us. Either all four DPS or all four supports will be targeted with an enumeration, which must be split between you and your paired partner. When it hits, both players will be flung into the air. The marked player will just fly directly up and back down, but the unmarked player in the pair must aim themselves to be knocked onto the adjacent platform, splitting the party up. Zoral Jaw will then position himself between the two platforms. Next, he will use Volok, summoning a giant sword on each of the two platforms. This one hits a quadrant, so four of the ground squares, instead of the one like the smaller ones did. He will then sink the platform, so both swords will hit both sides of the arena in the same spots. Again, remember that these swords slide onto the same square on the other side, just like the Volok before. There should always be safe spots available close to the boss because of this, regardless of the pattern that you get. This helps with healing and melee DPS, of course. Zoral Jaw will then cast Arrow 3 again, placing those pyramid markers over every player's head. Melee DPS and tanks take the front two squares in the melee safe quadrant, and range and healers split between the two faraway ones. It'll always look something like what you see here regardless of the pattern. Right after Arrow 3 hits, a tornado will appear on each platform. Any player that touches these tornadoes will be tossed away from it relative to the angle that you enter. Any player that touches one will also get wind resistance down, meaning you can only use a tornado a single time for the rest of the phase. Zoral Jaw will then face one of the two platforms randomly and do either forward or backward half. The side of the room unsafe from resolving this properly needs to angle themselves with their tornado and knock themselves to the other platform before dodging the AoE. Keep in mind that this hits the frontmost row on the safe platform, so be a little bit further back. After this, the boss uses Duty's Edge, doing a multi-hit party stack line AoE. This hits four times, dealing slightly increased damage with each hit, but just mitten heal through it, no problem. Now stay stacked, because as soon as this resolves, Zoral Jaw will then begin casting Burning Chains. When this finishes casting, each DPS will be tethered to a random support and need to get far away to break it. Whichever side of the room did not use the tornado to dodge the sword attack must angle themselves and use it now to get to the other side and break the chain. The side that stays can also help by running towards the back of their platform just to break it a little bit sooner for safety. If you don't break the chain, it'll pulse for big damage plus vuln stacks, but it's not immediately lethal. After the chains are broken, get close to Zoral Jaw for healing and mitt. He'll use Actualize for raid-wide damage, launch players into the air, and return to the original arena, ending the phase. He'll then use Projection of Triumph again. This is identical to the first one, with the Donut and Point Blank AoE lines passing through. However, this time he'll pair it with Half Circuit. This does a 180-degree AoE on the side that his sword is lit up, as well as summons two swords around his hitbox. If the two bonus swords are inside his hitbox, he'll do a Point Blank AoE. If they are outside his hitbox, he'll do a donut. So half room AoE, plus in and out mechanic, while also dodging the donuts and point blank AoEs as they pass through. As the mechanic continues to resolve, two tank tethers will come out again. The tanks need to circle around the boss's hitbox before splitting up and taking their respective hits away from each other and the party. It's best if the party kind of hovers around the side with the point blank AoEs as they go towards the outside of the arena, while the tanks pick up the tethers and go to the left and right. However, we ended up just kind of YOLOing the movement here, as you have no way of knowing where you'll end up being safe from the half circuit immediately beforehand, and you have to make sure you safely dodge whatever is in your immediate vicinity, both before and after. The most important thing is to just laser focus on that nearby beam that's passing through, and safely dodge whichever pattern it is. Tanks just need to stay away from each other in the party with those tethers as you dodge, and that's it. After this is Projection of Turmoil 2. This one is identical to the first, but Zoral Jaw will perform several half-room cleaves as you try and remove the stacks. Now, if you're doing the wall cheese method, you just stay away from the beam while dodging the cleaves, and when you reach the wall, go hide in the corner. If you're doing it the normal way, you'll need to time your stack explosions along with the half-fulls, or make enough space on the safe side's half to continue performing the mechanic even as he's cleaving. We pulled Zoral Jaw close to the tether's start point, popped two of the AoEs fairly quickly, dodged the cleave, popped one more AoE, dodged the cleave, 
pop the final one and dodge the final cleave. Honestly, as long as it's not patched, I don't see any reason to not do the wall cheese. It just makes it so much easier. After this is another tank buster, so invuln or big cooldowns and tank swap. Zoral Jaw will then jump to the center and does Dawn of an Age number 3. This one is a slightly modified version of Dawn number 1. He'll do Volok plus Sync, but no half room AoE. Either use Eyes here or do the speed dodge. You'll also need to spread for Arrow Pyramid, so just loosely spread as you prepare to dodge the Sync AoE, and you should have more than enough space. Right after that is Duty's Edge, so just mitt and heal through the four hits. It's then Greater Gateway, which functions exactly the same as the first one. That's then followed up with Actualize and returns the arena to normal. He'll then do one last multi-directional divide combined with forward or backward half, just like the start of the fight. After this, he will begin channeling one final Actualize, his Enrage. The Enrage timer is 11 minutes, which is more than enough time, even with some deaths, and it'll only get easier as more and more people pick up Tome Gear, weapons from the other Extreme Trial, and just get more comfortable with the fight. And that's it! That's going to be a wrap for my guide to Zoral Jaw Extreme. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned. We got normal raids coming out. We got savage raids coming out. And you know I'll have guides for all of it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.